My name is Mark. I'm the director of the South Chicago Chamber of Commerce. You're in the chamber office, which we tried to make look less office-like, but forgive the desks in the corners and computers here and there. We still have to do our work. The Chamber of Commerce is 89 years old uh, and has been serving the business people of this community for a long time. Our role is to help the businesses that are here, uh, whether it's help them find money to fix up buildings, uh, help advertise and promote, help them deal with city issues, uh, help bring them customers, whatever businesses need in this neighborhood, we try to help with. Uh, we also try to bring new businesses in, we try to help people locally start businesses, and then we also try to make sure this is a good place to do business. Uh, so we operate stuff like, uh, we manage a sidewalk cleaning contract, uh, we're going to build a fantastic new website for the neighborhood, uh, we're going to do a business directory, uh, we have a security patrol and security cameras. We offer a, a facade rebate, money to help businesses fix up the front of their buildings. Uh, I won't bore you with a longer list, but all kinds of stuff to make sure this is a good place to do business, a good place for people to come shop, uh, a good place for people to live in so far as we can shape that, uh, a good place for people to invest in so far as we can shape that. Uh, anyway, we're stewards of the neighborhood economy. Uh, by we, I mean I have a role in this, and my colleague in this work is Jessica Estrada. Hello and welcome everyone. I'm going to say a word about what you do. Um, 
I do a few things. I'm an administrative associate, so I help with everything to do with businesses, the art gallery, marketing, communications, and programming. Welcome, everybody. Yeah, Thank so you. If you get our newsletter, that's Jessica's work. Uh, if you get any kind of emails that are actually like laid out attractive or get any <laughs> flyers that are attractive, that's Jessica's work, not mine. Anyway, so Jessica oversees our communications. Uh, uh, if you have a business in the area or as an artist, view yourself as a business person, want to be in our business directory coming out, uh, talk to me. We're a membership organization. Uh, you just join and then you get advertised and everything. I'm um, glad to talk to people individually about that. Uh, and so let me uh, segue into introducing artists by, I want to introduce first uh, the person whose conversation sparked this whole thing, uh, Mr. Donnie Carter. I'll try to talk louder. He said you said this beautiful Oh, so I will explain. I will explain. Oh, okay. So there's an organization, the Claritian Associates, who do a little arts festival each year in the neighborhood. I think we're going to actually take it over and run it this year. But the last two years they've done it. I spoke with Mr. Carter when I was brand new in the neighborhood a year ago, less than a year ago, uh, and he said it would be great if you could do something to help artists in this neighborhood have a place to show and sell their work. Uh, and that seemed like a great idea, but I didn't know how to do it right away, but after a few months it crossed my mind, well, we could have an art gallery. We have a space we already rent. Jessica and I already work here during the day, so we're here for to let people in the door. Uh, so we had some lights put in and a sign out front, and we said, hey, artists, want to come show your stuff? And we got amazing work from fantastic people uh, who make up the artist community. Uh, and it all came from a conversation with Mr. Carter. Uh, so let's go around the room, let everybody introduce themselves, and we'll start with you. I, I don't want to steal the uh, your, uh, show, but, but I, I want to say this to y'all because I know it has something to do with all of us. I got a painting here, and I want y'all to invite your quarter to look at it, but I want you to know <laughs> the history of the painting. I just borrowed the painting from the collector this morning. Uh, for one of my shows, and it's a painting that I did when I was 13 years old in Mississippi. Mm -hmm. So that's that's uh, 61 years ago. Mm -hmm. So if you like to see the painting, and the reason I'm mentioning this is because when I was a kid, 10 years old, up to 13 years old in Mississippi, you know, which during that time it was before a lot of the civil rights movement they mm -hmm. jumped off. I was uh, protesting in my own way by developing my art. And I was a master cotton picker at the same time, <laughs> by the way. So I was satisfying the ball, what he wanted, and doing what I wanted to do in life for myself. Yeah. And uh, so, so uh, this is one of the paintings that I created. And you could walk over, I'll show it. You know, a portrait mm -hmm. I did of myself. At 13. Uh, at 13. Yeah, when I was 13. And, uh, one of my lawyer's friends bought it here in Chicago in 1991, wow. sight unseen, for $600. Wow. So I don't have any insurance on it, so we won't bring on it too close. <laughs> 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 and if I have to return it, but I did take, I had to go take some pictures of it so I could, for my own uh, gallery or whatever. But this is what I was doing, you know. Now you say, the kids who are 10 years old, don't always have to be scolded to do things. Cause by the time you get ten years, ten years, first year in your mama's womb, you're learning for nine months. Mm -hmm. Believe it or not. And then ten years added to that, you know, it, you know, don't take a caveman to know that you got to be smart enough to do something. Mm -hmm. You know, it has nothing to do with me alone. But kids do know things, you know, and they, they're easily branded when you see people treating them wrong. By the time they get to be ten or eleven years old, you know. So the point I'm making on the age thing on that is, if I painted this at 13, what year did I learn it? See, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and Sherman Beck, who was an educated teacher of art, you know, uh, uh, he would tell you that to teach a kid uh, to get to this point is a job, wouldn't it? Wouldn't it? Yeah, well, Sherman? What I would say is, you don't teach a kid to get to that point. You uh, open a door. And the kid with the interest is going to walk through it and take that and fly with it. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, yeah. You open the door. You saw, and you nobody told you that. You, yeah. you, you, you saw yeah. uh, something that you needed to get out, and it was there. I mean, yeah. There's some child prodigies that work on their own. Yeah. But, uh, that's right. You know, that's so the point is, is that the every kid, like the Reverend Osteen said a couple of Saturdays ago on, on TV, he said, we all are born to do something. And we, our brain is going to lead us into that and we put some energy toward it, you know. So the kids are also going to do something that we have to lead, lead them toward it, you know. Those who are not doing anything out here are the ones you can say who didn't get any direction at all. But either they're going to have to get the direction or we're going to have to grab their parents and their grandparents to give them the direction so they can grab on to the kids like that. That's called, what is it called, uh, Dorian? Uh, our next alderman is going to tell you what the total is. <laughs> Socialization. That's, yeah. Right. By the way, one of my students who will be here in a minute, you know, who I've been teaching for the past, uh, part time the past two months, I had her, uh, first I had her do drawings, you know, she wants to learn how to do faces. I said, draw all eyes for a week. Draw all noses for a week. Mm -hmm. The brain is going to record that. Mm -hmm. so you don't have to practice drawing mm -hmm. the eyes the second week because mm -hmm. you practice drawing the lips. Then uh, she had a deaf in the family, and I know <coughs> that threw her all off course. So I said, so what I'm going to do is just get you back on course. I had to sit down at my desk. I put a canvas over here for me and a canvas the same size for her and gave her two brushes, similar brushes that I use. I had two same brushes. And I had her paint the same thing that I'm painting. Every stroke I made, I had her make the stroke. Then on the last end, I had her turn the brush backwards and use the, the handle of the brush, stick it in the white, and make the flowers around the tree. There's mine over there. Mm -hmm. and if she was to bring hers here, but she's not bringing, mm -hmm. uh, uh, you would see hers mm -hmm. uh, done, done too. So, so but when I when she did that, she called me contentedly on the phone, saying, "I'm I can see things." I told her that's what I'm trying to show her how to look at things different when you go out there. You know, she she began to but she won't bring the pain. But that's what you have to do with people. <laughs> so uh, let's go around this way. Uh, Emmy Mayin is another of our artists. Emmy, introduce yourself. Thank you. Uh, my name is Emmy. It's, uh, my job, my job is a uh, with Chaffee Markers. My job is that. I have uh, 72 different kinds of uh, lovers. Show love, show passion, show pure love. And that is a uh, waiting washroom. It's some woman, any woman, uh, when I'm in the washroom, <laughs> is busy. And you know the woman? <laughs> the, the, the next is a, is a Indio, Indio. In the only Indio, verdad? From I don't know, and and that that uh, that uh, I did that in three months, full time. That is uh, I start with with uh, pencil, then sharpie markers, and then boom! Uh, I use the hat the hat pencil, the hat pencil, and oh wow! That that I love. <laughs> because it, it's my, my pure baby. When you, you do art, you feel like baby. It's my baby. It's my baby because the woman the woman got it got it nine months and feel he feel he feel when when grow up the baby. And is that is that you the star. The skate, the star, the how how you you feel mm, crazy. You you feel crazy. <laughs> The, the women or the people uh, they show, uh, make art, they know, they know how how se siente sufrido ah, cuando tú vas empezando making one art. Ya cuando lo terminas, cuando you finish, mm, I got it one baby more. <laughs> Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, we're going around that way. Missy Schachter is another artist among us. Hi, right. hey, everyone. Okay, I apologize for my voice. I'm my voice, but um, my name is Melissa Schachter, uh, but I'm known as Missy. I'm a digital photographer. Uh, my work is the very first photo up there. It's a self-portrait of me. Uh, since the theme was heat and chill, I did uh, a summer-winter type of theme, so it's like half and half of me. Um, 
a little bit about myself. I just graduated from Harrington College of Design with an associate's degree in digital photography. I live in uh, Pilsen, which is uh, in Chicago. Um, I specialize in portraiture, and but I do a little bit of everything. I do landscapes, live events, um, pet portraits, <laughs> children. I mean, I, I kind of do everything, but I specialize in portraiture. So um, if you're looking for portraiture, studio work, location work, um, portfolio work, uh, I have business cards up there, or you can talk to me afterwards. And this is my first gallery show, so I'm really excited. I'm hoping to submit more work. So, like I said, I'm fresh out of college, so this is like a big thing for me. I'm like excited. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm, I'm a little too excited. So, yeah. Well, Missy was so excited she spent all day here volunteering to set up the show. I've been here since 10 a.m. <laughs> to make this all pretty. So, I hope you guys enjoy yourself today and have fun. Thanks. Leslie Dixon. My name is uh, Leslie Dixon. I go by Leslie Bernardo Dixon uh, when I sign my work. Um, I mean, I primarily, um, like, like, like Missy, I, I um, primarily study uh, paintings, but my main focus is uh, portraiture. I like to step off in um, other arenas as far as uh, different types of art because it helps me grow. I uh, learn from each style that I that I mess with, you know, um, from landscapes to still lifes. But I really love painting from life. I mean, because uh, life gives me something that uh, a camera can give you or anything like that mechanical. Because the human eye is the most technical device out there that God has given us, and I try to use that to the fullest of my ability. So I'm still growing. Um, uh, I'm, I'm happy with where I'm at. So I mean, this this is the product of uh, what it is I do. Oh, another thing that I really love: uh, texture and paint. Um, I love the the art of the brush stroke uh, because uh, it tells you what the artist is thinking, how he or she feels, uh, what's going through their minds, and everything. So you know, just from a simple brush stroke, you, you can get several different ideas as far as what he or she is thinking. Or their approach to whatever it is they're doing. That's basically it, right there. All right. Thank you. All right. I'm trying to keep it short. <laughs> I'm going to invite Vanessa Ortega to introduce herself next because she's conveniently standing by her heart already. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, everyone. I'm Vanessa Ortega. Um, I actually. Uh, met Mark on an airplane to Arizona <laughs> and we started kind of talking about uh, what he does and what I do and that's how we kind of got in touch which I'm very very grateful for that so thank you Mark um, I'm a sculpture artist so I love working with metal I love working with wood um, I most recently worked started working with ceramics again since high school which was back in 07 ish um, so uh, this is my baby, like he was saying over there, he's like his baby. This is my baby right here, uh, sheet metal, it's welded, I love to weld. I also have some other work that I'm working on as well um, that are, that's welded. Uh, one of my pieces back there, that wall piece, back there is a recent piece from last year as well. It's wood with ceramic plates. So as you can see, I love working with ceramics. Um, you could make a lot of things out of clay, anything. You could make a painting if you want out of clay. You can make anything you want. And that's what I really, really love about working with clay and wood. I mean, I recycle things too. I go to junkyards and, you know, I pick up garbage sometimes and I, I turn it into beautiful things. And um, what, what my aim is to please, you know, the viewers well is myself. Um, everybody has their own kind of view. Um, for things, so um, whatever you feel, as long as it's good, makes me feel good. <laughs> so take a card, talk to me, um, and I hope you guys like my stuff. <laughs> Thank you. All right, uh, Vanessa Ortega, 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 Vanessa
Hodges, and I'm primarily an abstract artist. Um, funny thing, I started as a poet. Um, I've been writing since probably grade school, um, and then in 2005, I've started painting, and since then, it's, um, the passion has really grown. Um, I'm primarily abstract artist, but I also love uh, mixed media, so I use a lot of different textures, which I haven't really, I didn't show anything like that this time, but um, my abstract art also represents romance. I'm a romantic artist. I'm a romantic <laughs> overall. <laughs> so, um, like Noon to Midnight and Love and Energy, I love the, um, the balance, like within relationships. So usually within my artwork, I try to create and show unity, balance, and um, love and connection. Um, and then Sunrise, Sunset is my first I won't call it landscape, but it's more of a nature piece, obviously, with the sun. Um, and that's something I probably would, would do again. But, um, yeah, so that's my work, and I would, you know, love to talk more about it if you have any questions. Beautiful. Thank you. And I think the last artist who's on the walls who is here with us at the moment is Luz Olivier Godina. Hi. 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 <laughs> Um, I studied at the American Academy of Art for six years. My major was oil painting, and my passion is color. I, um, like I said, I majored in oil painting, but I love to uh, do mixed media. Um, I love pencil. Um, the Loteria there, I decided to enter it here because that's what... Um, you know, in our culture, the Mexican culture, that's what we play, you know, to relax. Uh, this other one up here, I like the colors. I thought it would relate also. It's, it's got approximately 28 layers of places. Wow. Yeah, and it took me probably like a month because, you know, you have to let it dry and then go over it again. The one at the bottom is acrylic, iridescent acrylic colors. The one on the left is uh, oil and canvas, but um, yeah, I like to do mixed media. So putting on my uh, Promoting Neighborhood Economics hat again, uh, I will say that most everything that the artists have created here is for sale. Uh, it may hurt them to see go something that they put hours and weeks and months into. But for a certain price, they're generally willing. Uh, so uh, you'll see on each piece there's a little tag that says uh, when it was created, what it was made from, uh, how much the price is. Uh, uh, if you see something you like, you want to take it home with you, don't just run out the door, pay the artist. But uh, you can talk to the artist directly about purchasing stuff from them. Uh, we've already sold, I think, two pieces from this evening's show that's been up for like an hour now. Uh, uh, we sold, I think, 13, 14 pieces in our last show. Uh, so One of which is going to be picked up tonight. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yep. All right. We'll have it for you. Uh, anyway, so uh, there are two things, I think, that are not for sale. The three uh, over there by Ben Adams, those three black and white pieces. And I know there's one other, and I'm forgetting which it is. Um, anyway, everything else uh, is for sale. Uh, help develop our neighborhood economy, support a local artist, buy their art. Uh, some of it is quite reasonable price-wise, even if uh, you just got out of school and don't have any money. Uh, some of it um, you might want to think about uh, getting a second job to pay for it or whatever, but it's worth it.